Alright delegates, welcome to lesson 6 of our Mun Academy Parley Pro course. Today, we're going to talk about procedural motions. Uh, so, first, as always, it's good to review what's a motion, what's a procedural motion. We're just trying to reinforce this stuff so that becomes like clockwork in our minds. Uh, again, a motion, you'll remember this from a couple of videos ago, is anything which changes the flow or the nature of the committee session. We've already talked about substantive motions, which change what's being debated, uh, the substance of what's being debated. So choosing to debate a resolution so that you're changing what's being debated um, or ch choosing to debate a amendment or to hear an amendment. Procedural motions, unsurprisingly, are about the procedure of committee. So this is about changing the rules of how uh, the committee is being held. So this can mean suspending rules. This can mean... Um, challenging a decision of the chair, and this can mean ending sessions generally. So let's go to this first one here, which is suspending the rules. Um, this this is essentially a um, this essentially gives you the power to um, request uh, throwing out any of probably pro rules. This this moves debate technically from formal debate to informal debate. But that doesn't mean it's pandemonium. It doesn't mean you're moving into unmoderated caucus or anything like that. It's, it simply means that there's something in particular and you have to specify this when you're motioning, uh, which you want to change. So the most popular version of this, uh, which most returning delegates think of when they think about suspending the rules is the reason why I have this photo over here. It's that uh, you're actually required under parliamentary procedure to wear a blazer or some sort of overcoat um, when you're speaking. You can take it off when you are sitting down, but if you're up there speaking, you have to have a blazer on. Now, sometimes the air conditioning in Hershey Lodge is not what it could be, um, and so, especially if you're in General Assembly with a hundred uh, teenagers packed in one space, it can get kind of warm. And so uh, someone might motion to suspend the rule that you have to wear the blazer, and that way you can stand up without wearing your blazer. Um, but this is the most popular example, but there's all sorts of different cases. You can try to, um, you know, lessen the requirements for an amendment. You can try to, um, change the, uh, tr try to throw out pro con debate. Like anything is technically fair game, but the real question is, this is up to the chair. Um, this, uh, you know, these are non-debatable procedural motions, which simply mean that they have to be seconded. The chair has to consider them in order, which is a big if, and there simply has to be a majority vote in favor of it. Uh, so anything is technically fair game, but it's really about if the chair is recognizing a suspension of the rules um, and if um, people vote in favor of it. The other um, procedural, non-debatable procedural motions involve ending sessions. Um, so first is one we probably already familiar with moving from moderated caucus to unmoderated caucus again just to note that these session these um, motions here these ones in particular can only happen in moderated caucus because you don't want to end debate when someone's in the middle of presenting the resolution that's not very polite so the first one we were pretty aware of probably is you can move you can motion to move from moderated caucus to unmoderated caucus um, you know to work on resolutions and such and um, the uh, usually the the chair will ask you to specify a certain amount of time uh, you're proposing to move into un 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 unmoderated caucus. So I motion to move into unmoderated caucus for 15 minutes, for example. So this is the change which caucus you're in, but these actually end um, a particular session of um, committee in general. And there's a big crucial difference between adjourning and recess, uh, even though they sound very similar. Adjourning ends ends the ends the committee in conference, while recess simply ends a particular session of the committee. So recess is, uh, you know, the the one p.m. to six p.m. session is over, so you have to have a recess of it at six p.m. Adjourning is it's Sunday and everyone's leaving, and you have to end that session. Um, and uh. These, again, are non-debatable, uh, so you don't debate this, but you have a majority vote, and, I mean, usually 
with adjourning, everyone says nay, but then the the chair doesn't recognize it anyway because everyone has to go home. It's a nice little moment. Um, but these are the three um, ending session things. And usually, another important thing to note is that this is not an invitation to try and end uh, com your session halfway through death session by motioning to do a recess. These are really more so honorary motions, and the chair will just will just put them in order at the end of that session when it's necessary. Now we have debatable procedural motions where there's some sort of debate on whether the motion will go through. Uh, the first is motioning to end debate or extend debate. Um, this can be uh, this can be done for resolutions or for unfriendly amendment debate. So end debate is essentially um, if you have a long speakers list and people think that you know the point's been made, we have to move on. Uh, you can motion to end the debate, or if you have a very lively debate and you think it's too too short, you can extend it. Um, now, technically, um, you know this is a debatable procedural motion because in the manual, um, you can have a pro speaker and a con speaker. So someone has to speak in favor of ending debate, and someone has to speak against ending debate, and then you have a vote. Uh, in practice, from my experience. Uh, this rule hasn't been followed as much. Uh, it's uh, the motion to end or extend debate has much more so become has much more been treated non as a non debatable procedural motion, where the um, the first speaker just outlines their their point and the speaker decide the sort of the chair has a lot more discretion on if if it's in order or not. But this is technically a debatable motion. Uh, just on this note, another thing you'll probably hear, um, which actually isn't in our our like polypro hand handbook, but is very popularly used in one is the motion to move to the previous question. So this is a different way of saying the same thing. Um, and the idea behind this is to think about um, committee sessions as a series of questions which are being asked and debated. So um, you kind of have your base question, which is, you know, which, you know, what should we do about these topics, right? Then you have specific resolutions and the question becomes, should we pass this resolution? Then within that, you could even have amendments. So the question becomes, should we pass this amendment? So the idea of motioning to move to the previous question is, if you're in an amendment debate, you move from this question to the previous, which is passing the resolution. It's the same way, this is just a different way of saying that you're ending debate. And you can also use it for resolutions to move back to the previous question of, um, how should we address these topics, which is kind of what moderated caucus is generally about. Next, we have reconsideration. Um, I will note that this one and the one we're going to talk about next, the appealing the decision of the chair, are pretty rare, um, but they exist nonetheless. Uh, reconsideration uh, means that you might have a resolution which was passed or failed, or an amendment which was passed and or failed, um, and it's about, um, provided you aren't in the middle of other resolution debates, so you can't stop someone else's to, um, to, um, debate, debate a previous one. This happens during moderated caucus, um, or if you're debating an amendment within the resolution debate, the previous question, um, you can motion, uh, to hear a previous, um, resolution or amendment. And uh, this is debatable because you have one pro speaker and one con speaker before the committee votes whether to do this. So one person talks in favor of reconsidering the resolution or the amendment and someone speaks against that. Um, but I will say that this is essentially, I've never seen it done. I've never heard of it being done. And that's mainly because we're always so pressed for time in committees anyway, we don't really have time to go back on previous amendments or resolutions. Now we have appealing the decision of the chair. So you'll, you'll remember from the, the points video that you can have a point of order where you simply ask um, the chair why they did this particular um, action with parliamentary procedures. So for example, um, you know, weren't you, didn't you call this guy for the speaker's list? Why isn't this amendment germane? Um, now those are questions. So technically the chair can just answer and there's nothing you can do about it. But appealing the decision of the chair is a point of order with power. That's how I like to think of it. Um, so you'd, you'd reserve right to make a motion. You'd motion to appeal the decision of the chair about whatever. 
Um, and this is debatable because first you'd state you'd state your case for why you think the decision was wrong. Then the chair, this the chair is technically in the debate now. The chair uh, defends their position, and then a vote happens. But because this is a big deal, uh, appealing the decision of the chair, you need a two thirds majority. Also, this doesn't apply to points and non-debatable t uh, procedural motions. So, for example, you know you can't appeal the decision of the chair on like a journey conference, um, and also for points. Imagine how how long it would take if you had a kid who kept wanting to do points of information and appealed the decision of the chair every single time just to make a one sentence point. Um, so those are the requirements for appealing the decision of the chair. Finally, we have. Um, division, uh, as is popularly known, or just usually motioning to hear a roll call vote. So let's go, oh, let's, let's just remind ourselves how votes work. You have three options. You can either be in favor of the resolution or the amendment or whatever, the motion. You can be against it or you can abstain. Uh, so abstain means you don't have a position, but this is not an invitation for if you just aren't sure uh, to like you really, it's really encouraged to not abstain because you know that just messes up the numbers. Um, abstaining is really for if you, for example, were in the bathroom or at, um, or at courts or something like that um, during the entirety of the resolutions debate. So you obviously can't really speak on it or have an opinion on it because you didn't hear the different arguments for or against it. But again, this really shouldn't be encouraged. Um, you also can't leave the room until voting has concluded. So this is meant to, um, you know, avoid any situation where people decide to walk, uh, you know, out of the building, uh, not out of the building, but out of committee session um, as a way to kind of force a bill to fail, a resolution to fail, to not have a quorum, things along those lines. Um, but uh, the standard thing for votes um, in MUN is audibly. So you probably have seen a chair... Um, you know, saying all in favor and people say I, and then just based off the magnitude of the sound, um, the, the, you know, the, the chair makes a decision. Um, however, sometimes, you know, especially if it's really close, um, you can think, you can have some doubt on whether the chair gave the right decision. Um, so if you think that's the case, you have to yell division, um, before they strike the gavel. That's the technical rule. Usually people are kind of, um, a little more lax on that if they like, you know, put down the gavel too quick. Um, but essentially, it has to be right after they make they say what their decision is. Um, now the division can be recognized or not recognized. That's up to the chair. Um, so um, you, you can just like not, you can just not recognize the division. But if it is recognized, then uh, what happens is that uh, delegates who are in favor have to stand up who are against have to stand up and I'm saying, and the, um, the, uh, chair actually has to make a count has to say, you know, 30, uh, 34, 20 against, uh, two abstentions. Um, and, uh, technically you can also move into roll call vote if that doesn't work, but that essentially never happens. Things usually resolve themselves through division. So these are our procedural motions. I hope this video was useful.